Life Audio. Hello. Thank you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for us. I'm your host, Jennifer Slattery, and after this short word from our sponsor, we'll dive into today's Bible verse, Matthew 25, 18. You may only be familiar with the Salvation Army by the bells we ring at Christmas. But did you know we also produce a network of Christian shows you can listen to on your favorite podcast store or even local Christian radio station? One of our shows, Words of Life, is a weekly 15-minute show featuring powerful interviews and testimonies. So, I sometimes call him my, yeah, my angel because I just feel like the Lord put him in my life in the perfect time. When I think Engaging about- conversations about topics impacting the church today. About it. And that really gets back to this fundamental question within Christian ethics. What does it mean to be made in the image of God? And I think that's one of the most important questions we can And ask. deep dives into Scripture. This divine appropriation of the Holy Spirit that God now dwells in the believer. That not only do Listen to Words of Life on your favorite podcast store or visit SalvationArmyRadio.org to learn about more shows produced by the Salvation Army. Surgeons keep our hearts beating. They do the amazing, help save lives, and so can you. Your CSL Plasma donation can help create 24 critical life-saving medicines that can give Grandpa the chance for his heart to swell when he meets his new grandson or give a bride the chance for her heart to skip a beat on her wedding day. Every plasma donation helps more than you know. Do the amazing. Help save lives. Donate today at your local CSL Plasma Center and be rewarded for your generosity. Today's Bible verse is Matthew 25, 18. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. Decades ago, God used the parable from which today's verse comes to reveal the condition of my heart, most specifically in relation to my call to write. And when I speak to groups about having the courage to live out their God-ordained calling, I love to share this story because it played such an integral role in my journey as a speaker, writer, and ministry leader. Prior to the sermon that I heard on this parable, I thought my reluctance to surrender to God's leading came from personal insecurity, which was true. But through the parable of the talents, God helped me recognize that disobedience, which is what my response was, stemmed from a faulty view of God, from doubts regarding his heart and power and his ability to make his plans come to pass not because of me, but in spite of me. Sadly, I could relate to the man who hid his master's money in the sand because I hid my resource, my gift as well. Now, if you're familiar with the Bible, you might recognize this story, which Jesus told toward the end of his earthly ministry. To paraphrase, one day a wealthy man about to go on a journey called his servants to him and gave them each a sum of money And he told them to manage it while he was away. So to one servant, he gave five talents, which was a large sum of money. To another servant, he gave two talents. And then to the last, he gave one talent. And again, that was still a large sum of money. And this was a relatively common practice in the ancient Middle East where servants acted like agents, whether that meant tilling the land and then selling the produce or in this case, investing a sum of money in some way that they usually received some part of the proceeds, which would motivate most people to make wise financial choices, as apparently the first two servants did. By the time their master or their boss returned, they had both doubled their initial sums. The master was thrilled. He declared first to the one and then later to the other, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. And he probably invited them both to a feast of some sorts. But then he called the third man. In verses 24 and 25, we read, quote, Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. 
So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you, end quote. Now, did you catch what this man was saying? How he viewed his master? He believed his master was harsh rather than loving and kind, dishonest rather than faithful and true. And it was because of that, because of who he believed his boss to be, that he hid his money in the ground. And his master was not pleased. You should have put my money on deposit with the bankers, he said, so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. In other words, you should have at least done something. And notice, the master never told his servants how or where to invest his money. He simply gave it to them and left, trusting them to use well what they had been given. And I feel that's often how God is with us. Yes, there are times when he'll give us clear and specific directions to maybe send a check for a precise amount to a certain ministry or to invest two hours every Wednesday serving a particular church program. But many times I believe he's pleased so long as we are using what he has given us, all that he has given us, our time, our gifts, our material resources to further his kingdom, to bless him and to bless others. Notice also, the master gave to each servant according to their ability. And that means none of them received too much. None of them received more than they could handle, nor did any of them receive too little. God knows precisely what we can handle. We may feel as if we're not ready for an assignment, but the truth is, if we weren't the people to take that role or responsibility on, then God wouldn't have given it to us. He would have given that role to someone else. Now, that doesn't mean he won't guide us to invite others to help us, but it does mean that he knows us. He knows what we are capable of. He knows our resources, and he knows where our every obedient step will lead. He knows our gaps. He knows our areas of weaknesses, and he knows how to infuse those weaknesses with strength. He also knows what we're not ready for. We may feel certain we're ready for a promotion, that we have all the skills and experience we need, and we might become frustrated when God gives that opportunity to someone else. We might even begin to compare ourselves with others who are occupying the role that we are convinced should be ours, thinking that we're so much better, not realizing that God looks at the big picture. He looks at our skills, our experience, our heart, our spiritual maturity. He looks at where we're at now, and he also looks at where we're going to be in a year or 10 years from now. I have found he's most concerned about our heart and our relationship with him and our reliance upon him than anything we do for him. He also knows the fears that hold us back. Fears that if we trace them out far enough, will land at his feet, revealing truths we haven't fully grabbed hold of and lies that have taken root within our hearts. Lies that tell us that our abundantly generous God is holding out on us or that he lacks the power to orchestrate our lives in a way that will bring joy and fulfillment or that maybe he won't intervene at all, that he in essence isn't faithful and isn't calling us to a thriving beyond expectations life. Here's the problem with that type of thinking. If we don't believe God is good, if we don't believe he has the power to orchestrate good, we won't trust him enough to take godly risks. We'll bury our gifts in the sand. We'll numb ourselves through endless Netflix watching or social media scrolling. But if we recognize him as the loving, faithful, all-powerful, all-knowing, gracious God who is always in control, who has a glorious plan for our lives and the ability to bring his plans to pass, and all of those things are true. If we recognize that, then we will surrender however he leads, even if that feels hard or uncomfortable. So where do you see yourself in this story? Which of the three servants do you most tend to resemble? And what do your actions reveal about your beliefs or your doubts regarding God? Let's pray. Holy Father, you are a good, loving, faithful, sovereign, powerful, attentive master. We belong to you. You retain full control 
over all of creation, full authority over all of creation. And we trust you. We know that you will always lead us towards what is good. Lord, when we are tempted to compare ourselves with others, when we look at maybe opportunities that you've given them, and we're tempted to think that you're holding back on us, remind us that you give us exactly what we need and exactly what we're ready for in every moment. And Lord, when we feel like an opportunity or a responsibility is just too big, is just too frightening or uncomfortable, remind us in those moments as well that you give us everything every opportunity, every resource that we need to do all that you've asked. You give us the assignments that you know we are ready for and that you also already have a plan to fulfill. All we have to do is surrender to you. All we have to do is follow you and to trust. You are bigger than our fears, than our anxieties, than our assignments, than our disappointments. And you will give us the strength and the power to do everything that you have asked. It is in the name of your victorious Son that we pray, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Your Daily Bible Verse is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Surgeons keep our hearts beating. They do the amazing, help save lives, and so can you. Your CSL Plasma donation can help create 24 critical life-saving medicines that can give Grandpa the chance for his heart to swell when he meets his new grandson or give a bride the chance for her heart to skip a beat on her wedding day. Every plasma donation helps more than you know. Do the amazing. Help save lives. Donate today at your local CSL Plasma Center and be rewarded for your generosity.